All right, this is me attempting a story time with a couple megapixel camera. <laughs> and bad sound that I keep forgetting. I have to speak up for. All right, so uh, it's just memories mostly. And my memories are stories. So at least in my head they are. Um, I really like to capture more of them when they're triggered because that makes sense. All right. <coughs> so something triggered this memory. I don't remember what it was. It was recent. Um, not the memory, the trigger. Anyways, I'm having trouble getting started here. Uh, it's about crystal light, the powder that you put in water and drink. Um, to me, when it first came out, it was just revolutionary. We, I was a teenager. We still lived on the boat. It was a sailboat in Southern California. And um, I don't know when it actually came out, but when I became aware of it, we were in Coronado, California, or Glorieta Bay off Coronado. And we had a friend. Um, she was, I think she was um, military reserves, I'm pretty sure. Um, I don't know where she worked otherwise. But um, just a really sweet, kind lady. And she had an apartment in Coronado, which is kind of a big deal. You know, uh, it's very expensive there. And um, she realized that we didn't always get showers. So she opened her home up to us um, and gave my mom a key. And we could go to her house when she's at work and take a shower. And that, that's a huge deal when you don't have a shower. It's a really big deal. So, um, I didn't mind doing that. What I felt uncomfortable about was lingering. And, um, as a kid, I didn't really have a choice, but we often lingered. Um, now the exciting part besides the shower was that she had crystal light <laughs> and she had this beautiful big glass vase in her refrigerator. I don't know if that's what it looked like, but that's how my mind remembers it. <laughs> it might have just been a jug. And um, she had the little the crystal light things, the little containers, and you just put it with the water and stir it up, and you had instant lemonade, and it was so good and so awesome. And um, so we would just drink that. <laughs> we drink, we would drink it up. But then we were like, it was okay, because we would always make a whole new, brand new picture. So when she got home, you know, she had a full picture of Crystal Light lemonade in there. But I, I, what I didn't really get the concept of was that she actually had to go buy those mixes. They weren't probably cheap then. They certainly aren't now if you get the actual Crystal Light brand. Of course, now you can get the off brands. But at that time, it was Crystal Light. Yeah, so that, um, I think, kind of wore her out after a while. <laughs> And um, the lingering part, um, she'd come home and we'd still be there often. And I loved seeing her, but I always, I don't know, I could pick up that it was an uncomfortable situation. Um, I don't know if she ended up telling us not to come so often or uh, something happened later on where there was a big problem that I can tell you about in a minute. It's really awful, actually. Um, <laughs> sorry. On the good side, <laughs> I had my, I think it was my 17th, 16th or 17th birthday party there. And um, that was a really great memory. It was just a simple little birthday party with friends. And we did pin the tail on the donkey and sat around. And I just felt loved. That was awesome. Uh, my mom and my sister tried to keep it a secret from me. But they would whisper about it while they were walking in front of me so I could hear everything. So I just pretended I didn't hear anything. But on the good side, they actually had a double surprise for me. By the way, surprising me was difficult to do anyways. And then even um, having a surprise for me at all was extremely rare. So that was a really... It must have been 17th birthday. It was just like really great. Um, they also... Uh, okay, I'll go ahead and tell this story too. <laughs> Should I start with the bad story or the good story? I am starting with the good story, which means I'm going to end with the bad one. Sorry. All right, so good story. Uh, they had another secret um, that does not have to do with their house, but does have to do with my birthday. We were, um, 
I knew my parents were planning to do something. I thought maybe that we were going to go to eat somewhere like Seaport Village or something. So I told my sister to dress nice because I think mom and dad were going to surprise me for my birthday. So we, we dressed nice and we went ashore and met them at Wendy's, our normal meeting spot in Coronado. And um, my sister and my mom got in a fight and they could get in some pretty big fights. And a lot of stuff got ruined when they got in fights. And I don't mean furniture. I mean, like, plans. Like, everything would be put on hold. We wouldn't do whatever we were going to do. It was all over. And everyone else just had to suffer. So they got in a fight. And we headed home. And I was super bummed because now no birthday dinner. Um, so, and I don't remember if this was before or after. This must have been after the little birthday party. But somehow I figured that out. Um, so we're walking home. And as we were walking home, we're going by the playhouse. The playhouse faces the, just before you go on the strand to leaving Coronado, and the back of it faces the bay. So when we would row by the playhouse, we could often hear, um, at that time it was Fiddler on the Roof, we could hear the Fiddler on the Roof music, and that was always a lot of fun. Sometimes we'd pause and just listen. Um, and I love plays, but we could never afford to go into any. And so... Um, we were passing the playhouse. My mom's shoe broke, like right in front of the playhouse. So we stopped to figure out what to do. It was a sandal, and you know how awful that can be. And then instead of going on, we turned towards the playhouse, like towards the doors. And I was a little frustrated because I'm trying to, like, like, we're walking home. Why are we going, you know, why are they heading that way? <laughs> we don't go that way. And then... I don't know if somebody told me or I realized we were actually going to the playhouse. And that was the surprise. It wasn't dinner. It wasn't ruined. We were going to go see Fiddler on the Roof at the Coronado Playhouse. That was just awesome. And it was wonderful. The guy uh, who played the star. I should know his name, but I'm tired. It's bothering me that I don't know it. <laughs> he was amazing. If you know it, you're probably yelling it at me right now. Thank you. Thank you for that. I hear you. <laughs> so while we're in the playhouse, my mom was sitting on the end of the aisle we were on, or on, you know, the last seat toward that's at the aisle. And um, the guy, he would, you know, like, why can't I remember his name? <sighs> Anyways, you know, in the movie, he talks to the camera, you know, breaks the the fourth wall or whatever anyways this guy would do the same thing he would talk to the audience and the rest of the people in the play just acted normal and um he had a big thing of cheese and he would cut it and he would like kept feeding my mom cheese like it was real cheese and he would insist she eat it and it was sorry excuse me so funny anyways because i was i was fine with that i wanted i was fine with it staying that way but they're like oh you're the birthday girl you should sit on the end so he interacts with you but yeah he wasn't interested in interacting with me <laughs> uh, it was great I think at one point he sat on my mom's lap yeah it was really great though it wasn't weird it was just funny so um that was the fun story and I loved that um anyways uh we did have a falling out with this lady and she ended up getting engaged to a man who had been married before and my parents were dead set against that. Uh, we are very fundamentally religious Christians. Um, and that went against their teachings. And so uh, there was another couple that we had a similar issue with. And because of those two, we actually ended up getting kicked out of our church and then ostracized later. That was not a fun experience. Uh, <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, it really hurt this lady because my mom and dad you know, went to her and her fiance and had to sit down and, you know, went through what they believe were biblical reasons that they shouldn't get married. And they were asked to leave it alone. Um, it just, and they wouldn't, it was just very, very, very hurtful. And obviously there went the showers and the crystal light. That's not what upset me though. I, I mean, we had other ways we dealt with not having showers and crystal light. But what we, what really hurt was the friendship. Losing the friendship was, um, that one and the other couple losing their friendship was just absolutely horrible. Um, I've never heard from her again. I hope that her and her husband has had a happy life. And even if, whether they stayed together or not, you know, 
she's a great person. She deserved really great stuff. So I hope the best for her. Um, the other couple, we were really good friends with the guy. And um, we had just kind of gotten to know the lady. And, um, yeah, it was, I don't even know, like, years later I saw them and they still didn't seem like they recovered from that. It was quite a blow. Um, beautiful people. And uh, such he had such a great sense of humor. And I don't know, I just hated that we hurt him. And I know I was a kid and it wasn't my fault, but... You know, when I was in it, it felt like I was just mixed up in it, too. I mean, I can't say that I agreed or disagreed with my parents, but I certainly wasn't allowed to say anything, so it didn't really matter. But, um, yeah, hated losing that friendship. Anyway, so that went from crystal light to complete heartbreak. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't mind seeing these folks again someday and just, even though it wasn't my fault just telling them sorry as in I feel the empathy towards what they went through and I understand how hurtful that was and I wish that it never happened um I'd love to tell them that so we'll see you never know I've I've actually been able to do that with one person somebody I really hurt actually in junior high school and found her she didn't remember what I did but I did get to apologize. And we actually were friends for a while until Facebook deleted my original account and I lost her. Um, I think I'll be able to find her again in the future. Um, because I have her name in an old uh, yearbook. But uh, it's in storage. So until I get that, I can't find her for some reason. But super sweet lady. Um... If I had had her name and I had been able to go to the northern part of California when Karen and I visited, I would have totally looked her up. But I didn't have her name and we didn't end up going up north after all. We just stayed in the south area. So, yeah. I guess that's not ending on the worst note. Good things can happen. You never know. <laughs> We're still alive, right? Alright. Hope you all have a good day. Stay hydrated. <laughs> Bye.